I have attempted all morning to think of a realistic story, realistic being a key word in this sentence, a realistic story that you could have convinced me we would start the show with. Like if you had called me, Lance, at 5.45 this morning when I woke up and said, hey, I guess you've already seen it. We're going to start the show with blank. And it's realistic. Like, you know, aliens kidnapping, you know, Kirby Smart, not realistic. Anything realistically, this is at the bottom of the list. Well, I mean, if Rockstar would have called you and said, look, I know Dunaway's on this golf trip with a bunch of dudes, um, but Lance got arrested at 6 a.m. this morning, it would be more believable than what we saw. Yeah. The first thing I saw when I got up this morning, looked at the phone, was that. I thought it was kind of a joke. I was kind of a daze. Um I, I could, well, the only reason I didn't think it was a joke is it was being reported by Jeff Darlington, who covers the NFL. In fact, I've followed Jeff for a while because he cover he's based out of Miami, or at least once was, and covered a lot of Dolphins. Yeah, I was actually surprised Jeff Darlington was on the scene. I know, I know ESPN's got an yeah. army of people there, so much so they've got NFL reporters there. And I so I immediately do what I have now learned to do on the Twitter, right, on the X is click and make sure it's the actual account yeah. and I'm not being fooled by someone. But when you see it, just it was a constant flow all morning. Yeah. And now the memes are out and everything's out. Um, and, and I guess multiple reports and conflicting reports and, you know, what's what. I mean, this is, and I'll tell you for, look, the circumstances behind it with a pedestrian getting struck. And yeah, and that, that, that is terrible. It was apparently someone with one of the, um, merchandise teams that was hit and killed it's a separate situation this they are connected in that that was what was yeah. creating the traffic issue but they're disconnected in in you know what happened with scotty Sheffield. yeah my point was going to be outside of that this might be the most blown up arrest of an athlete <laughs> yes, ever for something so minor that we've ever seen yeah now, we're going to have our good friend Tommy Spina is about to stop by in the next five, ten minutes. He's going to jump on set with us. Um, you know, he's up to date on everything that's going on at Valhalla. And so he'll give us his legal opinion on how this thing goes. He typically s tends to side with the defendant. Is that <laughs> is that what, here he is. Come on here in, Tommy. Is. Come on. Tommy Spina is uh, going to jump in Dunaway's chair. I'm Ryan Brown. This is Lance Taylor. If you're just joining us, Jim Dunaway is on a golfer's vacation. What perfect timing, by the way. Yes, uh, Dunaway uh, to be out. I, and I've, it, been, I've been up about uh, 30 minutes. Are you seriously? So Tommy's sleeping late now. Rockstar is here, our entire late. crew. Criminal defense attorney Tommy Spina, a longtime friend of ours, been on the show many times uh, back in our radio days and now here uh, in the next round as well. First of all, it's great to see you, Counselor. I hope you're doing Thank well. Thank you. It's, it's uh, really interesting being on this side of the desk. Yeah, you normally uh, you're in the guest seat, but we gave you done with you. on up there. Yeah? If you're looking for a fourth or if somebody's right. feeling okay. tired and weary yeah, and wants will, to will, move will, along we, to a new profession, hey, let me know. Especially <laughs> the summer rotation, always good. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, you know the ins and outs of all of this. I know state laws are different. Uh, this seems like something that would be pretty universal. But for Scotty Scheffler to not only be detained, but taken in, processed, and put in an orange jumper, it seems a little extreme? Uh, it is clearly overcharged. Uh, I, in between the uh, 815 wake-up call from Lance and the... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, realize. You're a busy man. I thought you could have been in, like, Wyoming for all I know. It's Friday. It's okay. rainy. Okay. It's late. Uh, uh, the assault second degree, I did reach out to some friends of mine in Kentucky about the law in Kentucky, and I even text you the statutes. You may not know it because you hadn't had a chance to look, but assault second degree requires the use of a deadly weapon. Now, it's my understanding that there was some traffic issues, and Scotty went up over the median to, well, go, to get around, and the officer grabbed the handle of his car and Scotty kept moving about five or ten yards to the gate where you get in and out of a country club. And right. maybe not even knowing, was it? do you have any idea if it was driver's side or passenger side or back well, door? No, I would think it would be pass driver's side. I'm yeah. just guessing, but uh, that's certainly not a deadly weapon. You also have to have serious physical injury. Uh, and I don't know what kind of injury could be caused. He may have uh, turned a nail. Uh, <laughs> but it's overcharged, clearly. 
in my opinion. I suspect in the long run uh, it will be reduced to something, and it may even be dismissed if he agrees to say, I'm sorry, or I didn't know. Uh, there are many things that can happen uh, by way of disposition uh, on a case like this. It seems to be a clear misunderstanding and certainly an overreaction. We've got, and I sent it to Scott, and I don't know if Scott's ready to pull this up, um, but we've got the statement from Scotty Scheffler's attorney. So maybe you can take a look at this because it looks like Where do I the, the see way oh, they're hey, laying it out, it's, it's going to be on your left, and we'll yeah, give we'll him time to set second. this up. Yeah. But the way this looks, the way he's framing this statement, uh, Scheffler's attorneys, that Scheffler was not in the wrong at all. Yeah. And, um, and there actually might be some recourse on the side of Scheffler now. Yeah, so for those that don't know, before we do this statement, let me just set the scene here. Scotty Scheffler is on his way to Valhalla in Louisville today. They're unfortunately, and as I said, independent. It is connected because of the traffic issue, but independent of what happened here, there was a, a worker that was walking to the course that was struck and killed by a vehicle. I, I, I've, I've actually seen it reported as one of the shuttle buses. I don't know that to be confirmed, but the terrible, yeah. terrible situation, awful situation. It caused traffic issues. Caused traffic issues. There was a shutdown of the road. Apparently, the PGA of America, aware of what happened, PGA of America is who runs the PGA Championship, reached out to local law enforcement and said, hey, we understand traffic is a disaster. Is there any way we can at least get our players in? And the police told the PGA of America, inform your players, you know, as you approach police officers, you'll be in a courtesy vehicle that is marked, show your player credentials, you'll be allowed to enter the clubhouse. Um, and, and so Jeff Darlington of ESPN reported when Scotty arrived at that spot, there was a broken down bus or a stop bus that was blocking the lane they were supposed to be in. That's when he swerved out, and that's when this confrontation occurred. He, he, as I understand, he swerved out and I, went over a median I, to get around. Yeah, I've seen video. I did not see a median there. There are traffic cones. I didn't see a median. Now, that's well, not to say there wasn't one that existed. I'm Tommy. trying to explain why yeah. crim criminal mischief would be involved okay. because that's like damage to a property mm -hmm. in, in excess of $250. Right. Uh, by definition, in, in both Kentucky and Alabama. Uh, but the assault, second, is what got him arrested. Otherwise, he would have been just been given a citation in Alabama for a traffic violation. Right. But the felony requires the actual taking yeah. him. Can so, you so, see so, that so, statement uh, from there, Counselor? And I, I, will, I will read it for those uh, that are simply listening and not watching. In the early hours, this is his attorney's statement. In the early hours of the morning in advance of his tea time, Scotty was going to the course to begin his pre-round preparation due to the combination of event traffic and traffic fatality in the area. It was a very chaotic situation. He was proceeding as directed by another traffic officer and driving a marked player's vehicle with credentials visible. In the confusion, Scotty is alleged to have disregarded a different officer's traffic signals, resulting in these charges. Multiple eyewitnesses have confirmed that he did not do anything wrong but was simply proceeding as directed. He stopped immediately upon being directed to and never at any point assaulted any officer with his vehicle. We will litigate this matter as needed, and he will be completely exonerated. That is the attorney's statement of attorney in Louisville that would be similar to our man here, Tommy Spina. That's the it, type of person it, Scott it would have. almost sounds like something I would have said. No no doubt. I could, I could hear you saying that. Like, um, like I if I were reading it at AL.com, it would have said, as released by attorney Tommy Spina, 100%. Well, you got to... Remember, and I'm not trying to diss law enforcement at all, but that's an individual call. It's not, don't, don't take offense against all law enforcement officers, but they have all the discretion in the world in that moment. So they can choose to do what they want to do because the arrest is based on a very low standard of proof referred to as probable cause. So it doesn't take much to get there. Apparently, this particular officer is not a golfer. Um, Apparently not. Yeah, they had no uh, idea who they had arrested. Uh, yeah. There is no telling what might have come from this had there been other dynamics in play. Uh, you are at Valhalla. Uh, and 
my guess this is probably the last PGA event that will ever be held. There. Well, they hey, love that so, place. So though. quickly, they do. and I know play by play is no fun for people listening, but Scheffler is on the tee box about to hit his first shot of the day yep. from the tenth. Yep. And uh, Brown, I'll let you uh, give a little play by play on what he does with this. Well, I'm I mean, surprised he's not wearing orange. <laughs> <laughs> he was earlier today. Um, everyone at the course, and I've watched video. ESPN has shown his warm up extensively. He seems to be in good spirits, laughing, talking. Oh, um, looks right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. It looks like he blew <laughs> in the right no. trees. It looked like my shot. <laughs> oh no, that's pretty rare for. Uh, I mean, it's just right at the fairway. But It'll pretty take rare him for him a minute to get a groove going. But yeah. the delay, I was told by a lawyer in Kentucky who I spoke with right before I walked in this door, was not about his arrest. It was about the weather. Yeah, the weather, and they were understanding. I think the traffic contributed to it as well. You actually yeah. had video of players, Will Zalatoris, one of them, having to abandon their car and walk. Is how bad traffic yeah. was. They couldn't even get to the point where they could be let through so, so yeah i think the, the pga of america had to delay the, it the point i was trying to make is it's all within the discretion of the person making the arrest uh in that instance a law enforcement officer uh he did not have to go to the extreme that he did but he seemed to have been pretty whipped up with the verbiage you're going to jail yeah and I, one, once you hear those words you might as well just Sit back and relax. Yeah, enjoy because, the ride. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you, you, you have to go through a process yeah. to come out of that sewer pipe on the other end and land on your feet. Or in this case, the tee box. Yeah, back on the first tee at Valhalla. And, and I know Brown, one of his biggest fears is ever getting arrested. Never I haven't been arrested jail. since 1996. And all my stuff was misdemeanors back in the day. But And I remember getting the mug shot a couple of times. I never, when I was processed, I never was put in an orange jumper, though. That seems extreme. Well, typically they would not take you into general population if you were going to be in and out, what we call a round tripper. You just go in, <laughs> make bond, and go back out, and they never take you upstairs or make you change clothes. You just stay in the holding facility area, the lower level, yeah. as you're familiar yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the camera and the print machine is, yeah, 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 and yeah. the drunk tank and all the But I've even stuff. spent the night a couple of times and didn't have to wear the jumper. Well, it, it, I don't want to probe too much, Lance, but uh, where, <laughs> where were you? <laughs> uh, one time Vestavia. Well, one of that your was when grounds. I was there. Uh, you probably were before we had a relationship again. Right. I was a kid. Uh, one time Birmingham. Well, in Vestavia, at that time, there were, was a jail that had four beds. Yeah. Uh, and when I was judged for 15 years, I, I didn't have anywhere to put anybody. And I certainly didn't really want to put anybody in jail. My, my time at Homewood, Vestavia, and Mount Brook oh. never felt anything. But the one time downtown was a little different. Yeah, downtown, downtown. It got a little more noise factor right, yeah. going on. And, and you know, the... the the fragrance of ammonia, Clorox, and stale <laughs> urine is just yeah, something nice. about that. That, uh, but I mean, you know, the majority of people had on the orange jumpers, and my my whole point was for for Scheffler to have that on that quickly. It almost seems like internally they were trying to make a point. I mean, I it know. was it was less than an hour after the reported arrest. They already had the mug out and everything. I mean, yeah. I've never seen them. I didn't know they got them out that quick. That is uncommon. Yeah, uh, less than an hour. Like oh, if I to get him out. No, 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 no. That the mug shot was already oh. online. It was in their online well, data. Oh, base. They probably expedited his processing, uh, I would guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm just guessing. I, I like my clients to be processed quickly as well. We right. heard Morgan Wallen was in and out in 30 minutes. There well, was, I never saw a mugshot. Did you see a Morgan Wallen mugshot? Uh, Maybe there was. I think one existed. But I, I tell didn't. people there was, okay. when presenting themselves to surrender on a warrant that it can either take 45 minutes or six hours right because the you never know what else is going on in the jail or with the jail staff or is it court time or is there some other disruption within the facility that could slow things down staffing is always an issue but somebody knew who he was and they were trying to get him in and out I, you know, for that, he should say thank you. Um, I, well, I, a couple more questions real quick, though. We do need to do some commercials here. You know how the game works, Counselor. Tommy Spina, criminal defense attorney in yeah. studio with us. John, that, that was one right there. Well, was, hey, I know. I, we're happy to give you a uh, give you a commercial. You've been a long time. Well, I hate recommending you because something bad's happened. <laughs> I know. One of these charges reaches a felony level, right? Uh, the assault second degree, okay. especially on a police officer. But if you read the elements of the offense, and I'll let Lance look at his cell phone and read it to you from the first text I sent you. Okay. Uh, you'll see that the facts that we've been told about 
if they are in fact true, do not rise to the level of assault in the second degree, especially the part about the use of a deadly weapon. To my understanding, the police officer reached for the doorknob of the car to open the door. He attached himself to the door is the, all the reports, whatever that means. What, what is he, Spider-Man? I, don't I, mean, know. Uh, I mean, you're right. You pretty much have to grab part of the car. One of your write-ins said something about the Louisville Police Department uh, being the biggest gang in the world. Yeah. Uh, Do they have a I, reputation? I didn't get very positive feedback yeah. from my Lexington, Kentucky friend about yeah. the Louisville Police Department. So, but he, I say that yeah. with all due respect to sure. all local law enforcement. Right. Um, so the question I wanted to ask, though, is it says he was released on his own recognizance, and obviously he was because he just teed off in the PGA. He had time mm. to warm up. That's uh, a nice thing, too. What, did you have time to warm up? No, that you got released okay, without but having to post a bond. And that's what I wanted to ask you. So with something that serious that involves a police officer, how does that even go down? Is it because of who he is? Did somebody get involved, do you think? Well, it, that is done more often now than it used to be. Uh, but in Jefferson County, for example, any bond, $10,000 or less, you can sign yourself out. Okay. That that has to do with the jail overcrowding. Mm -hmm. uh, poor people can't make bonds. It, it, we had to make changes. We were holding people in jail that couldn't afford to make bonds. And remember, there is that thing we give lip service to uh, that's written in the Constitution about the presumption of innocence. Right. So basically, <laughs> this is this <laughs> is no. I mean, he's he's right in a lot of uh, cases. This is fairly common. Then this wouldn't just be because he's Scotty Scheffler. But where is Scheffler from? Uh, Texas. Okay. So his attorney based in Texas, and I was going to ask you this too. Like, does he call an attorney in Louisville that he knows to help out with the whole situation? I would. Yeah. I, I would not go. I, I hardly go to Bessemer without local counsel. So this, all right. So, so this, you would this always, you know, the judge, somebody that's familiar with well, the territory, just right? Just the lay of the land. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are things yeah. that you need local counsel for, and you. Sh I, I would never go into another state, and I do go into other states in federal courts, but never without local counsel. So if this happened at Shoal Creek, and Scheffler's attorney in Austin reaches out to you because they know you're Tommy Spina, and they say we need your help here, like do you have to get in the car and drive downtown to take care of this, or do, uh, that would be Shelby County? So to Columbia, to take care of this? it would it would be Shelby County. Yeah. and I, my guess is that bond you just saw him being made would not happen in Shelby County. Right. But you would have had to he'd fit. He'd miss his tea time in <laughs> Shelby <Shulker. County. laughs> Sorry, Matt. Sorry, uh, Chief. You, uh, you, know, you know I like you but all. The attorney, but the attorney in Louisville, did he have to get in his car and like go down to not, the police department? Well, does he make know. a call? What happens there? Back in the old days, yeah, there was that element. But back in the old days, I could I would do that because I wanted – to be hired and I, you could bring like a roll of quarters into the jail and a pack of cigarettes yeah and get a client we, right yeah because yeah. you're trying to to say look i'm here to help you and oh by the way here's a roll of quarters so you can make phone calls cause yeah there were only pay phones back yeah. in the days and uh here's a pack of cigarettes today if i did that i would go to jail <laughs> for <laughs> right. promoting prison contraband, contraband. right yeah. yeah so watching scheffler uh walk to the the cruiser there with the uh, the two officers Seemed very calm and he was having a conversation. You go back to the discretion of the officers. You would think that after having a subtle conversation that I'm Scotty Scheffler, I've got a tee off, that there would be some, some I don't know, reasonable thought, um, some logic of, of maybe letting him go. I would assume at that point they still have the discretion to let him go. Is there any repercussions possibly for that police officer? Potentially. Uh, it's a long uphill battle to establish a wrongful arrest because the standard of, of proof that allows them to make that arrest is so low. The bar is very so low. So probably just call it a truce and we're done with this? If it were me, uh, You being would, the attorney or Scotty Scheffler? If it were if you. If it were me being the lawyer representing Scotty okay, Scheffler. Okay, so if you're his attorney, right. I would be trying to throw a bucket of water on this and put it to bed as quickly as possible as minimally as possible without him having to come away, well, especially with some kind of felony conviction. That's right. I mean, that's that, what I was. That's yeah. almost comical that he's charged yeah. with a felony. And that's what I was about to ask. Like, how quickly can you negotiate just charges getting dropped on something like well, this? Well, courts are busy. 
So that requires going to court, like the attorney and the police maybe, can't get together? Maybe not. They can. But yeah. they don't get together with the police. They get together with the prosecutor. The district attorney or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so crimes are considered offenses against the peace and dignity of whatever state you happen to be in. Mm-hmm. So the fact that this officer will have input into that and, and you know, their internal affairs, uh, administrative proceedings that could take place. Um, against him, if somebody wanted to bring it, I wouldn't recommend it because yeah. all that does is throw gasoline on a raging fire to me. Well, I think they've done um, this because watching his approach on 10, he put it literally three inches from the cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out of the rough. And, and so, settled down there. Yeah, yeah, so we saw Shoffley, uh, you know, melt with a 62 yesterday. And I just wonder what, what Shoffley, you talked about this course before we went on the air. It's going to be really soft and forgiving oh, today. Oh, yeah, it's gettable today, Counselor. It's well, been raining all night. Well, the energy from that cream of wheat and cheese toast <laughs> must really be kicking, <laughs> kicking in at this point. Well, let me finish with the legal question. Cause I'd we, rather talk about Sicily. I know you have, but we drug you out of bed to talk about, uh, talk about uh, legal. Issues. My hair's still wet. Oh, it looks fantastic. <laughs> um, based on just, this would just be a legal opinion here, based on a guess, I think Scheffler's record is clean from what I can gather. The guy's got a pretty clean reputation. Would you assume all these charges get dropped? Uh, I, I would like to think they reach some agreement where they, that he does something in exchange for that, maybe teaches a class at the Does a PSA the foundation yeah, something like or that, yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, he's got to be a platform. I, I, that, so you that's could. what I would do. I mean, I mean, you can take the position. Hell no, I'm not going. Right. Uh, prove it. But what do you gain by that? It just strings it out, creates more attention. Uh, I, I don't think he should get, you know, special favored treatment, but they need to reach some compromise where everybody can shake hands, kiss and make up and go away. You know, there's going to be multiple narratives, though. On the other side, um, just out of principle, does does Louisville PD stick with their story where it doesn't look like they did something and overreacted and were in the well, wrong? You, you keep referring to Louisville PD. This is one officer at Louisville PD. He's got a supervisor. He's got a lieutenant. He's got a chief. Uh, my guess is he's now just a, like any other witness in any other case. Uh, he's a witness. And someone else is probably going to be calling the shots. I mean, they're not going to want to do anything uh, to make themselves uh, look like what they look like, uh, I wouldn't think. Birdie I, I on would hole think one, by they the way. would be just as interested in reaching some resolution that makes everybody sort of kiss and make up and go away. Yeah, and because and, there is and, a PR factor here for the city of Louisville as well. Absolutely, that's yeah. why I said yeah. that Valhalla will never have another term. Well, I, mean, I mean, that it's this is possible. A, yeah, this is a blight on this one. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, you cannot. This is an expression of mine that. Some people listening have heard me say in my office, but you cannot make love and war at the same time. Uh, that statement had the last line was kind of warlike. Yeah, the old the front line. The first part of it was more love like. Yeah. Look, I, I didn't do anything. Right. We have a misunderstanding here and somebody overreacted. And that overreaction was that one single individual who decided this was a felony because when he grabbed the car door handle, the car kept moving. Yeah, That's the way it was described to me, if those are the facts. But when the word litigate shows up in a uh, statement. Well. We get to war? Lawyer speak. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. Scotty. uh, I I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to drag this out and turn it into O.J. Simpson. Scott Scheffler, Scotty Scheffler, uh, obviously, he himself had a statement, and Scott is showing that. I'll read it real quick for those just listening. This morning, I was proceeding as directed by police officers. It was a very chaotic situation, understandably so, considering the tragic accident that had occurred earlier. There was a big misunderstanding of what I thought I was being asked to do. I never intended to disregard any of those instructions. I'm hopeful to put this to the side and focus on golf today. And then he goes on to give his uh, respects, pay his respects to uh, the person that passed away. I, I would assume. I think he wrote that. No, no, no. That's what no, guys Tommy. I would assume another, a good attorney says. It's okay. Another thing that looks like I would have written. Oh yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. A good yeah. attorney comes in and says, "Okay, here's your statement. I'll go nuclear in mine if I need to." 
But yeah. that'll be for me. You No, he's expressing no, I know. in that statement that he regrets what happened. He thought he was doing what he was instructed to do. And then he quickly moves to a much bigger picture of somebody's lost their life today. Yeah. And and that's what we should be focused on, not the fact that uh, I went around the car to get to my tea time. Uh, did this happen early this yeah, morning? Five, yeah, five-ish. Five yeah, yeah. And so, it was rainy and dark. I so mean, that's he's one contribute. of those golfers that goes to the range and warms up, unlike me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the I would imagine. Uh, you know, sadly, and, you know, we just had the regions here last week, and all of those people driving, you know, the shuttles around are volunteers. And, you know, the, the, at least what we've heard is that's what it sounds like, is one of these volunteer shuttles is what struck and killed the pedestrian. And you just... I mean, it's awful for the family of the pedestrian, but you think about a poor volunteer, you know, yeah. limited visibility, whatever the, the situation was. It is a terrible situation. So, I, and I just want to real quick, I know things keep coming up. This uh, is from the actual police report. So you were commenting on the damages, right? That would have to be, what, what was it you said, like in... Serious bodily injury. Okay, so from the police report, detect, um, Detective Gillis stopped the subject, attempted to give instructions, subject refused to comply and accelerated forward, dragging Detective Gillis to the ground. Detective Gillis suffered pain, swelling, and abrasions to his left wrist and knee. He was transported to the hospital for further medical treatment by emergency medical per personnel. Detective Gillis' uniform pants, valued at approximately $80, were damaged beyond repair. Does that sound like a felony to you? No, I'll tell you what it sounds like is the cop knew who Scheffler was, and that's going to be a nice settlement. Well. Because there could be a civil angle to that, could there not? Well, of course. Uh, everything's in play, but, you know, you're not going to resolve this event on this day. This tournament has to finish. Time has to pass. I would put it, uh, uh, you know, I put some time between the event and the actual resolution. However, from Scotty Scheffler's standpoint, you know, he needs to put it behind him. I don't know where this officer's head is, but if he's like ramped up about it, you know. But how conflicting are the stories? Again, Scott, <laughs> they, they are. The, the statement from the attorney yeah. and what you just said, the yeah. statement from the officer. Yeah, the police report. I but, mean, it, right there in the attorney, in the confusion, Scotty is alleged to have disregarded the different officers' traffic signals. Multiple eyewitnesses confirmed he did nothing wrong, simply proceeding, stopped immediately upon being directed, never at any a point assaulted any officer with his vehicle and the, uh, the police report says officer dragged to the ground damaging uh, body parts going to the hospital and 80 dollars pants ripped beyond well, repair well maybe there's a body cam and well, that would be nice yeah but our when, security cameras it, it's it, right it, at the entrance of the clubhouse there should be security cameras there it's very common in my business for the facts to not line up by each person reporting the facts That's well we why, have a jury right exactly yeah now would that be the best spot to end up? <laughs> I, I would say not. But he's got a better chance of missing the cut than this thing going to trial. Uh, you know, I don't know where his head is. He's out there. Well, he's playing one under through one. And, <laughs> yes. and, and, and I'm, I'm saying, I, still, I, think, the first I think he catches yeah. Shabby. I think he still wins. No, I, think, I think he probably has the lead after today. I wonder honestly. what happened to his odds, Mister Lance. Who, uh, Shoffley or Sheffler? Or Sheffler. Sheffler. Yeah. Oh, I bet this morning you could have. You could have gotten some really, or they probably pulled it know. off the board. We'll ask Furman. <laughs> Furman's up uh, yeah. at the top of the hour. We'll ask him. <laughs> hey, one thing before you before you get out of here. Uh, the other night we were at Trivia at Odie's, and you heard him talking about Johnston RV. Our friend Nick Johnston was was down from Coleman, and he asked me randomly. He's like, "Hey, have you ever watched the Jinx on HBO?" Oh yeah. And I was like, "My man, Tommy Spina was on that that council." I, I was. Yeah, and, part of the team. And, and There's uh, a second episode, did, second part coming out. I did make. A cameo appearance uh, in in episode one, uh, as they showed the defense team walking across the street. Uh, I have no speaking part. Uh, <laughs> my primary uh, role was uh, not lead counsel for sure, but, uh, but you, I was involved in the case. You have been practicing for almost a half a century, right? Yes. And Thanks I think for reminding me. I think forty six years. Hey, forty six years. You're getting along great. I think you told us at one point think it was on the air that he was the craziest guy you've ever dealt with well he's dead now and i don't like to talk about the deceased i wouldn't say he was crazy uh craziest person i've ever dealt with i i would characterize him as a psychopath with just a hint 
of a conscience. That's the way. That, wow, that, a psychopath wow. can have a conscience? Well, he wrote, that, he wrote that note yeah. uh, to let the police know there was a cadaver at that house. He was feeling a little guilt. Th that's a weird sign of a conscience, but that is a conscience, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. And then again, he cut up a guy whose head has yet to be found right. uh, in Galveston and was acquitted of that case. They still look for the head? Uh, we're still looking for the head. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck on that. We make light of so things. Much on your plate. We do. So much on your plate. We do. Yes, but I got out and got up and uh, came man. here for Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you're you the for best. having me. Do you, you know think you've you. been up at every minute getting a client out of jail throughout the night? Like from, from 12.01 a.m. to, you know, the, 6 o'clock in the morning. In the old days, the answer to that may have been yes. Nowadays... They, they, the first call is to a bondsman or a person who has property that can post a property bond. I usually don't find out about these things until after that process has taken place. Um, they may call, and, and a family member may call, and I would give them instructions on how to go about making a bond, but you're not going to find me answering a phone call much after five. Um Unless it's an emergency. I mean, I, 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 there are some people, I, I would, you being one of them, Lance. Uh, <laughs> well, hope, hope we're never in that situation. Am I on the no, list? No. Do I You're on the list, but you, you would never call oh, because you, you would never put yourself in any circumstance. <laughs> well, I would, would have said the same you. about Scotty Shepard. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> Scotty didn't ask for this. I know. Scotty ran into to a guy oh, who yeah. was having a bad day. Well, I mean, it appears. <laughs> that but. is really, there are cases of wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> Trust me, if this, again, I'll go back to Show Creek. If this happened going into Show Creek and somebody said, who do I need to call for you? Before my wife. I'm telling them Tommy Spina. Yeah, well, thank you. Then call my wife. Yeah, yeah as a matter of fact, on the app that I had created, uh, it had a function where you could call a friend uh -huh. if you push this button. Right. And, and I always had it geared where it would call my best friend first uh, and then call my wife. Okay, uh, yeah. Because you really need somebody on the outside working for you because you don't get a lot of access to telephones when you're in prison that one phone call stuff that's, is, is that that's, legit that's the movies ultimately oh. ultimately it's legit but, but how fast but, do you get but it don't expect it to be happening the moment you walk in the door 